Hello, hello everyone. Now I did promise more NC action and here we have of course the usual tier 10 matchmaking again uh, and I chose this game because I'm against the Minotaur division. Now I didn't bother making a commentary yet on the upcoming clan wars thing with no CVs and stuff. I've, I've posted what I have to say about that on Reddit and on my Twitter on, and on whatever. And if you watch my stream, you know exactly how I feel about it. And I haven't been arsed making a bit about that yet since uh, I have to moderate my language in such a way that uh, I just don't get banned from the game. <laughs> so yeah, that's still a work in progress. Let's just say I think it's absolutely retarded and leave it at that. Now. I did mention in my previous uh, NC commentary, which was yesterday, uh, I did say I could make a bit of a smoke guide if people wanted it for the NC, and there was a lot of uh, positive responses, a lot of people wanting some help with it, so I figured this game where I'm against the double Minotaur is probably the best example of just why I have absolutely no fear for Royal Navy cruisers in the Minotaur, uh, in, the, in the NC. It doesn't matter if it's Minotaur, Neptune, whatever. Oh, he's going to keep sailing in a straight line. Ah, oh, if he turned out and dodged most of it. I think I didn't have quite enough lead. That tends to be pretty much my first volley in almost every NC game tends to have too little of a lead. Since I always kind of have to remind myself, oh crap, I need to lead more. Most important, more important here though. Mi Minotaur smoked up. Minotaur started shooting, I pop my spotter plane. This is of course one of the reason I run the spotter plane on the NC. It already has fantastic range, so we don't use spotter plane to increase our range. We use spotter plane to do exactly this. And that was what? Uh, 11k damage on that Minotaur? Uh, how did we know where to shoot him? We look for where his shells are coming from. We look exactly, we can see the shells from both the guns on both sides of the hull, and we put the crosshair between them and we fire. Also, to make this easier, stopping makes life a lot easier when it comes to blind firing uh, cruisers in smoke. Because since you are firing in smoke, oh, wait one second, you see this guy slowing down. When you see a Royal Navy cruiser slowing down like that, wait until he disappears. You still gain your lock on benefit, that is the tighter dispersion that you have if you're locked onto a target. You still gain that benefit for a couple seconds even after he disappears. And when he disappears, that is when he's going at his slowest. That's when you know he's stopping. So if you put the crosshair just a bit ahead of his ship, like I did there, and you wait until he fades and then you fire, you usually get some pretty damn good volleys. I got a random hit on the Minotaur in there. You saw my, the dispersion. So I'm shooting where my shell landed to see if I might maybe score some additional hits. Nope, no additional hits, so I start harassing the DDs. As I was saying though, when you're shooting into smoke like this, note that when you lock onto a target, your crosshair uh, follows the target, your crosshair tracks the target, meaning uh, you don't really have to adjust for his movement because the game automatically does it for you. However, if you're shooting into a smoke, you don't have any of that lock-on. You don't have the benefit of that lock-on. This Minotaur, his smoke ends, he starts sailing forward. Uh, I'm behind the island, so he can see me when I fire. And welcome to World of North Carolina. Good accuracy means you, it rewards good aim, means that Minotaur did not have a very fun game. But yeah, as I said, if you're shooting in smoke, it's easier if your ship is completely stationary. The reason for this is uh, because if you're not locked onto a target, uh, the game will not be adjusting your aim and keeping it on the spot that you're aiming it at. So uh, your, your aim will drift. And this is very common, especially if you're moving full speed and trying to shoot targets in the smoke. Another hit on the Minotaur in the smoke. I'm just, every volley I'm continually har harassing them. This, that was even without the spotter plane. And that's just because this, uh, game, this ship has such good accuracy. And this kind of tactic is something I use very often against all, all forms of smoked up cruisers. But it's especially strong against Royal Navy cruisers because, well, uh, they have such a huge citadel. So any random hits in a smoke have a very high probability of scoring these citadels. Um, Iowa, this is not how you angle an Iowa, just so you guys know. Just a heads up, that's a good example of how you shouldn't angle in an Iowa. But you need to keep in mind that if you're learning to smoke fire, and you still don't know exactly how to adjust your aim to compensate for your own movement, um, just, sp just stop your ship. It's the easiest way. Stopping your ship completely and then firing makes life a lot easier when trying to punish these ships. 
especially once they start moving in the smoke and you have to start compensating for their movement as well as having to compensate for your own movement that makes life a lot harder in general anyway uh, i won't bother showing much else in this game it doesn't really have too much of an interest in going in here uh if you notice the score i actually have had over 100k damage there uh, and uh, even though we were like what five a bit more than five minutes into the game the game actually ended with me topping the scoreboard quite comfortably um, as a tier 8 in mostly tier 10 matchmaking and the reason I topped the scoreboard was all the dam was pretty much the 80k damage I did to the Minotaur division at the very start of the game and uh, kind of dominated uh, their division just in a tier 8 battleship um, note that I don't run spotter plane on all battleships I run it on battleships that have uh, either good enough dispersion to be able to make use of it, example uh, Yamato, or enough guns to compensate for the lack of dispersion to be able to make use of it. Example Grosse Kurfurst. I run spotter plane on Grosse Kurfurst. I don't run it on Bismarck, uh, Gneisen now, Friedrich Grosse. I run fighter plane instead because there's no point of running the spotter plane on those because you don't have the dispersion to be able to punish the smoked up uh, cruisers in the same way. But on the Grosse Kurfurst, you go from 8 guns to 12, so you have enough. You, you're simply throwing so many shells into that smoke that you have a pretty high probability of hitting them. So this is pretty a pretty universal recommendation, a pretty universal tactic uh, for battleships in general. I did feature a similar guide like this uh, for the ranked season, the last the, the season seven ranked season, because I knew there would be a lot of Belfasts and Fijis and such. So I made a guide on how to shoot them in their smokes. But since I've gotten probably a lot of new subs since then, a lot of people might not have seen it. I can link that guide down below in the comments, in, since it also offers. Uh, quite a lot of insight on how to use the spotter plane better in order to be able to punish uh, enemy smoked up ships. Anyway, this was the smoke thing I wanted to cover. Let's move on to the actual NC commentary that I had planned. Alright, since the last two games have been against tier 10s, which of course means you have to play a lot safer and you're kind of you're kind of down a lot. You you are strong. You you are in a hard position from the get go. I figured I'd show you a game where you're the top tier. Now this doesn't happen nearly as often facing lower tiers as often as you face tier 10s in the NC. Uh, but when you do, um, you really feel like kind of a god. Honestly, um, this kind of applies to many battleships, but the NC especially. Fuso is what, 21 kilometers away? He's sailing in a straight line. I shoot him over the island, of course. NC shells can easily arc over the island. And because he sails in a fairly straight line, and because NC dispersion is so damn good, that's an opening 22k damage to that Fuso. That's pretty, almost half his health gone. So this this the in sea especially against the same tier and lower tier battleships you just feel so very strong i i this is probably i feel the probably one as one of the most powerful tier eights uh in the in sea the only exception me being maybe something like the kutuzov which is um also extremely strong but this combination of dispersion and overall if if you got the accuracy to support support the dispersion you can just punish and bully enemy ships so very hard in this thing now, I am giving a lot of broadside, note, but I am not detected. So you gotta keep in mind that sailing like, if I was detected right now, I would never be giving this much broadside to all my enemies. But because I'm not, it's not really that big of a deal. I do get spotted, so I start turning in, but the, the Turpits can't really shoot me because of the island. He doesn't have the similar arcs that I do, the Fuso I'm angled against. So the threat isn't really that large. Hipper does turn in to actually dodge my bully, but that's perfectly okay. I'm not really in a hurry. This is a standard battle. Um, there's no real need, no a real reason to charge in to the enemy in a standard battle. Also, my positioning is actually really good where I am. So I'm able to pretty much shoot all of the enemy team on this flank. I'm able to shoot them as they try to push this side or sail away like this guy is doing. Oh, goodbye, Hipper. Uh, Hipper is usually a bit trickier to citadel, but of course, NC uh, plunging fire makes it quite easy. As I was saying though, this position is quite good. It's halfway towards the enemy cap, so to say, and halfway away from my own cap. Uh, we're not exactly base camping, but we're not exactly pushing too hard either. And what did I say in my previous commentary on the NC? What is it the best at? Mid-range. That is exactly where we're positioned right now. 
you see that I'm around 13 km away from the hip, from the turpids. That's far enough away from the turpids that they can't spot me. I'm using my excellent conce the excellent concealment of the NC to be able to get undetected whenever I wish, and I can just pick and choose. I don't really. F Nah, he's still so angled, I don't really know if I want to shoot. Maybe I want to take a shot that the Queen Elizabeth is going to keep going in a straight line. Mm, might as well go for him instead. But, like, uh, this, the concealment at mid-range, especially when you play mid-range like this, it allows you to pick and choose what targets you want to shoot at. A bit too much lead, he wasn't nearly as fast as I thought. But, um... It gives you this freedom to select the most optimal target for your guns without getting any sort of retaliation in between. And that is, of course, amazing. Also, you're close enough that uh, they move away, so I accelerate. I want to keep up with them somewhat. Um, you're close enough that they don't have that easy of a time to dodge your shells either. Oh, that volley might be okay. Okay, actually he's turning in. He might be a bit faster than I thought. The Turpitz is surprisingly fast. Yeah, he's a bit faster than I hoped, so uh, I only deal 8.5k damage. But uh, damage in the NC tends to accrue quite steadily. Once again, when you have consistent guns, you tend to do pretty consistent damage. And in that way, you tend to consistently have an impact on the enemy. NC selling the straight line. There's a huge island in front of us. We don't really care what the NC do. We, we have these huge arcing shells, and especially in pla places and sh situations like this, it's extremely good. And even at uh, 18 km, we don't really have any issues landing consistent volleys. Once again, great dispersion. I'm constantly keeping angled, but what I am keeping an eye out on is, of, the, is of course, the fact that they have multiple DDs. As long as I'm not as long as I'm not spotted between volleys, this is very important. If you suddenly stop being spotted between volleys, then there's probably a DD close by, and then you gotta then you gotta alter your way of sailing. You gotta accelerate, or you gotta slow down and reverse. You gotta change your course and so forth. Uh, but but it's very important to always check. 17 km away, and we get another citadel and 19 k So this is like life for these tier six battleships. It's not fair in any way. I mean, this is what happened. This is this is kind of when a tier ten faces a tier eight, uh, which I was the last two games for me in the NC. This is of course the opposite. This is you as the top tier, and the NC really is a massive, massive bully. Um, they can't overmatch your nose, which means uh, you can tank, you can nose in against them, and they can't really do anything unless they switch to HE. And uh, any sort of broadsides you pu punish, uh, hell, even, even angled battleships you punish so, so heavily. wonder if that's enough lead. I thought he slowed down because he lost his engine. It might not be. Ah, uh, uh, looks pretty okay. Yeah, pretty okay. What was that? 14, 15k damage again? Pretty much every volley. I think the worst volley I've had has been something like 5k damage. And considering your reload is 30 seconds and it's a standard battle, meaning you're not really in any hurry to have a huge impact right now, but you can instead steadily grind a steady, steady impact. Ah, not the end of the world. Hoping I can maybe finish this guy off. I am tempted to turn my guns here, but see, I'm a bit worried right now because only the Ognevoy has been spotted on the map. So, and there was a smoke earlier. You see, I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a smoke between the islands. So I'm slowing down my... I accelerated, but then I slowed down. And it turns out this decision was actually the optimal one. Because the Kagero has been sneaking closer. The Kagero was in fact waiting for me in that gap, hoping I would keep the same course and sail into those torps. But because I was suspicious, since if you haven't seen DDs on the map in a while, you haven't seen them get any kills, uh, it's time to start... Uh, looking around a bit and wondering if perhaps the DD could be on your side and if it is it's a good time to start shifting your course shifting your speed any way to throw them off and even the margin there was very small uh, it was enough that I didn't eat a single torpedo in fact I haven't taken any damage this game and that's not to say I've been playing passive compared to like the rest of my team on this flank I'm pretty much still the front line I got a cruiser behind me I got a DD in front of me like I'm not really too worried about my positioning I think I'm sitting in a fairly good position. I'm, get, I'm seeing if I get, can get a cheeky double strike, and since my guns are already pointed this way, I'll see if I can maybe get some turpids damage. The Queen Elizabeth, however, survives with the smallest sliver of health, since I only got overpens, and I only got overpens on the New Mexico as well. So unfortunately, I didn't get any double strike. I didn't even get a single kill at all. Now the Turpitz is pushing in. Turpitz is an excellent, a top tier brawler. So what do we do if the Turpitz start pushing in like this? Well, we just start reversing. 
Why would we sail forward? We don't. There's no need for us. If we sail forward, there's the possibility of the Kagero. Actually, the Kagero just got spotted on a minimap, so that gives us a lot of safety. That's important to note, since now we got more maneuverability, since we don't have to worry about incoming torps. Now what we have to worry about is putting ourselves in a bad position, like a crossfire, and uh, potentially being rushed by the Turpits. The Turpits is faster than you are and especially if you're reversing he is faster than you are however if you see his rush coming a, a long a long way back and you start fully reversing it's gonna take him so long to catch up to actually do anything that you're usually quite safe he gives a lot of broadside which is of course not recommended but he gets away with only two overpens because he managed to turn before my shells landed uh, I think if my reload had been up there, he could have eaten 8 ton of damage. You can easily break uh, 25k damage on a broadside therapist if he does a turn like that at that range. And once again, we are undetected. And that means, of course, the Kagero. Well, we see the Kagero, the Omnivoy hasn't repositioned. We have a lot of safety again. And we can just continue slowly moving our way forward on this flank. Slowly moving towards the camp. Now, uh, if the situation, like if the enemy is being more aggressive, these guys weren't exactly being aggressive, they were kind of kind of playing this very passive game as we were. If the enemy is being more aggressive, there is, uh, there is a good reason to do a bit of tanking, like you can go a bit closer, you can go within 10 games so you're spotted, and you do a bit of tanking, you, you take some of the damage aimed that your team, um, you take at the, uh, in return for your team, so you do you, basically some effective tanking as a battleship. However, um, this enemy team didn't really ever directly push I don't know if you looked at their sailing but most of the time they actually sailed down to the J line and they did weren't really trying to push they were more trying to flank and get these good firing arcs on us and so forth and when they tried to do that um, just playing very slow and methodical and never exposing your broadsides means that you will eventually kill them all with your guns that's what it comes down to it you will eventually kill all your opponents if they try to pull that on you I wonder if I'll get any damage. No, not enough lead. As I said, turpits very fast, and you want to hit the superstructure. I landed my shells a bit too far in the back and got no penetrations at all. But it's a good lesson to learn. I mean, damage wise, 150k damage. It's, well, 148. Uh, but, uh, like, it keeps adding up. The effect you have constantly constantly grows and the longer you stay in the battle lo longer you stay relevant you know you know once again that i am maybe a bit closer than i usually would be but that's because these guys are being pushed from two flanks so i want to of course help out and this is a good time to push because um if the enemy is caught between two flanks that is your chance to deal a lot of uh uh, unmitigated damage, a lot of damage that it's hard to deal with, they can't really angle against it, um, they can't really retaliate because they're focusing on someone else, so these are the moments that you should seize and uh, really try to make the most. I'm aiming a bit more forward now, hoping that maybe I can get a better volley, and of course the lovely NC dispersion, and the amount of broadside he gave meant that I got a nice 20k volley on the turpits. And that is of course... Uh, why you need to angle against the NC quite vigorously, quite, quite carefully, because, uh, well, even even a Turpitz can lose uh, a third of his health quite easily if he gives too much broadside. Trying to see if I can maybe finish him. He is healing, but I'm aiming a bit higher because I land my, want my shells to land on a superstructure. I think his heal will keep him alive. It does, in fact, keep him alive, but at this point he's limping and just trying to save himself. And... Uh, Continually pushing down this flank. Uh, you might have noticed that I'm pretty much mo been moving forward very very slowly the entire time uh, The only times where I have stopped or started reversing is either when the enemy team has been really actively pushing me from uh, an awkward flank or I have had my suspicions of the enemy DD locations like the Kagera torpedoes. Other than that you continually bully, you continually push, you're this presence on the flank that continually pushes the enemy backwards and just makes them, uh, you're, you're a threat, you're, you're like this slow lo looming threat that continually pushes and pushes and pushes and because of your concealment you're very hard to deal with because well, they only really see you when you fire 
And if they do give you broadside, well, actually pretty unlucky. I only got five pence there. I was hoping to kill him and get my Kraken, uh, but I don't think I'll be able to get it now because he's surrounded from all sides, so he will undoubtedly get killed quite easily. And he does go down to the New Mexico. The Ognevoy, he sails around to a corner and basically wastes a lot of time before dying without really achieving anything, so I might as well end the game here. 196k damage, and... This shows you, of course, how much easier life is when you are a top tier compared to when you're against tier 10 matchmaking. You saw how very careful I had to be in my yesterday's NC commentary when I was against tier 10s. And that's, of course, because there's so much more firepower coming your way and any sort of broadside can get you so heavily punished. Whereas when you're against lower tier or even same tier, you, are, it's, you have a lot more flexibility. And it's a lot more forgivable in general, which is of course why I don't really like uh, being up tiered, especially for newer players, especially tier six, uh, tier five, and tier six, because people are still learning the ropes, and then they get thrown into uh, massively heavier firepower than they have themselves, and they get punished really, really harshly for not really making mistakes that are that large. They make mi small mistakes, but because of the difference in power, are so extremely large. Um, those small mistakes are met with heavy, heavy punishment, and that's why I don't really like the current matchmaking system in this. I'm okay with get, uh, facing higher tiers every now and then if you're leveling a line, but on my NC so far, I think I've played 10 or 11 in North Carolina games, and uh, this is the only game that I've actually gotten to play against uh, lower tiers, or even same tiers. Every other game has been against tier 10s, and that's not, that's not really a good sign of uh, the way that, of the matchmaking is working out. Regardless though, the team score is... Well, 1.9k, not really that special, but then again, it was a standard battle. You're unlikely to get that much done during a standard battle, that much XP during a standard battle, unless you have a really, really special game. Uh, most of the time, uh, standard battles give less XP because there's no cap defenses, there's no capping, and in general, there's less dynamic gameplay. There's uh, Both teams kind of move towards each other very, very slowly, and they, the enemy team slowly collapsed, and that was pretty much it. There wasn't too much tactical death in the gameplay itself. And a detailed report, well, I mean, let's see if I can actually find it. There we go. A potential damage, 1 million. Considering how much time I spent uh, in stealth, I'm pretty okay with that. Of course, I could have tanked a lot more. I only took 15k damage. I don't even know if I used a single heal. I might have used maybe one heal, doubtful. Uh, but you rarely need it as much. If you remain angled in an NC, unless you're eating torps, um, or being very heavily HE spammed, in which case you're probably not positioning that well to begin with. But those are really the only situations that force you to blow through a lot of lot of healing because the NZ is has the combination of stealth and angle tankiness that makes it exceptionally tanky as long as it doesn't get out tiered. In which case it's still like very very tanky, but it's of course much harder to play. Anyway, my recommended build, you can, well, you just look at my NC build from yesterday. I'm, of course, still using the same build since I am leveling this and I am leveling, leveling the American battleship line on Russia with the hopes of reaching uh, the Montana by the time my carriers have been completely eliminated from the game where the AA will be useless. Um, that sounds like some good gameplay design to me. Anyway, uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I hope you have a great one.